Thanks, guys. I'm Cody Goodwin, and welcome back to the Daily Iowa TV Sports Studio. Cyclone State? Not so fast. After dropping their last two contests to their noisy neighbors, Kirk Ferentz and company got back on track under the lights in Ames on Saturday night. Daily Iowa TV Sports' Josh Bolander was there and kicks off our coverage. Josh? Another round of the Cyhawk series taking place in Ames, Iowa, Saturday night, and as you would expect, all the tradition and pageantry of an in-state rivalry on display in this one. Hawks ready, clones ready, let's get this thing started. After a scoreless first quarter, Hawks in business in state territory, Iowa quarterback Jake Brudock finds Tavon Smith. Play action sets up the deep ball, putting the Hawks in scoring position, and they would do just that. Rudock to Kevonte Martin Manley, Huge game for the junior, seven grabs for 60 yards in this one, seven nothing, black and gold. Hawks with the ball again and they would go to the ground this time. First it's Mark Weissman plowing ahead for the first down. Damon Bullock showing off the legs as well, slashing through the Cyclone D and then it's Jordan Kinzeri getting involved. Big run puts the Hawks in the red zone but black and gold can't put seven points on the board. And settle for this, Mike Meyer chip shot, 10 nothing Hawks. State with the ball back just under two minutes to play in the first half and driving until James Morris makes a heck of a play to intercept this Sam Richardson pass. That would lead to another Meyer field goal. 13-0, Kirk and company head into the half on top. Paul Rhodes not happy with his team's execution. Cyclones getting a stern talking to in front of the home fans before heading into the locker room, and they would respond in the third quarter. Richardson finds Quinton Bundridge for this 67-yard score. He'd go off for a buck 46 in this one. More to come on that later, but the Hawks would respond. After an impressive kick return by Iowa's Jordan Cotton put the Hawks in fantastic field position. Jacob Hillier would atone for a couple of first half drops here. 26 yard pitch and catch to put the Hawks back up 20 to seven. Heading into the fourth quarter and they would continue to pour it on. Fans and Jack Trice heading for the exits after a Jake Rudock one yard TD plunge. They would actually miss a pretty spectacular last seven minutes of action though. First it's Richardson to Bundridge. 26 yards to make it 27-14. Clones need the onside kick and they get it. Unbelievable. Even more unbelievable to Cyclone fans, their squad would turn the ball over just a couple of plays later thanks to this fantastic B.J. Lowry interception. Bundridge would catch a third touchdown pass later, but it was too little, too late for Paul Rhodes and company. The Hawkeye bench heads straight for the ISU sideline. The Cyhawk Trophy coming back to Iowa City after a two-year vacation. Final score in this one, Iowa 27, Iowa State 21. Obviously a huge win for the program, brings our overall mark this season to 2-1, and one. but all of the talk post-game centered around Iowa's fullback turned running back, Mark Wiseman. Certainly Mark's been a workhorse for us, and uh, we're going to have to keep an eye on him during the week, every week, I'm sure, but uh, I thought he did a great job. Us as receivers, um, our job is to catch the ball and block, and, and when, when you know the running game can, can su succeed like that or excel, then it gives you more confidence. Uh, right. It opens up the play action, so it opens up a lot of things. It takes a huge weight off of everyone's shoulders. Um, the offensive line, they were making those holes. Uh, Mark, Mark put his head down and said, I'm just going to run. He trusts them, and I trust them completely. And the offensive line, I'm sure if you asked him, just knowing his personality, he will praise the offensive line more than you can imagine. Now we have to move on, get more wins coming together, just keep improving. You know, this team has a lot of potential, but we just need to improve. Now, Wiseman, a key contributor to Iowa's third down success against their in-state rivals, but junior wideout Cavante Martin Manley had by far his best game in an Iowa uniform this year, which both his coach and his quarterback addressed post-game. I feel comfortable with him, if that's what you're asking. Uh, I feel comfortable with all of our receivers. and uh, I mean, he does a good job getting open, so if he gets a good job getting open and you can see him, we give him the ball. I'm not sure what our third down percentage, what our goal is for third down percentage, but um, it was obviously high today, and uh, you know when you can do that, third down is, is money down for us. And when you convert third down, you're moving the ball, you give your you give your team uh, more opportunities to score. Probably our biggest focus offensively today was first down. Um, you know they, they they shut us down last year first down, so we had uh, we were behind the count an awful lot, a lot of second and nine, second and eights, second and tens, and uh, as a result of that, we ended up in a lot of third and longs too. So. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm no offensive genius, but when it's you know third and six plus, it's, those percentages go against you. So, you know, we, we were hoping we could move the ball a little bit on first down tonight and do a better job of that than we did a year ago. And obviously, a number of other Hawkeye sports were in action over the weekend as well, and we will have more on all of that coming up in Monday's edition with the Whip Around. But the, pro, but the program, unfortunately, is out of time tonight. So to wrap things up, let's throw it back to Josh Bolander with the final report on Saturday's win. Josh. After snapping a seven-game losing streak last weekend, the second longest of head coach Kirk Ferentz's career, the Hawks have now reeled off two straight. 
And with first-year quarterback Jake Rudock and his receivers finally clicking, and running back Mark Weissman proving he can carry the load for a third successive week, things are looking up for Iowa, who head back to Iowa City next weekend looking to win their third straight, with Western Michigan set to come to Kinnick Stadium. From under the lights in Jack Trice Stadium in Ames, Iowa, I'm Josh Bolander, Daily Iowan TV Sports. That's it from us at the Sports Desk. Reed and Kelsey, back to you.